What's going on guys? Dane here and welcome back to, you already know right, we got counter side on the docket and hear me out real quick man, woggle me, toggle me, we got a counter pass in this game as well which is effectively the battle pass of the game and that matters because a lot of people are looking at this thing right now, myself included and being like man a lot of this stuff that is giving me as rewards like they're nice right and you know 300 diamonds, uh, you get some of these uh, gorgeous you know fusion cores, all that cool stuff but we all know it doesn't take like a rocket scientist, it doesn't take a bird's eye view or a professional gamer to know the real prize in here beyond the IV drip of upgrade materials is Eins and Zwei and you get I believe around 10 copies of these characters out of this pass. So I want to answer for you guys real quick, is it worth it and even if you don't find it worth it at least you know what they do so you can counter it whatever the case may be but I want to answer, is it worth going for Einzen's Way? Are they as good as they should be for how cool they are now? Without wasting any time, Einzen's Way are a strange combination. By the way, I pulled them yesterday, so I don't have any crazy gear on them because I'm honestly like on the fence about putting gear on them uh, until, you know, I want to get this out of the way and then kind of decide. But I do have a crazy, if you saw the last video, you saw the crazy strat I was rocking. This is the gear I had on them in that ridiculous strat I was running. So, you know, they're still, they're still operating, man. And it kind of makes sense. They do operate as two separate characters. They are the hammer bros of this game, right? If one dies, the other is still alive. If the other dies, the other is still alive. They have to both die to be off the board. When they're together, they're stronger than ever. Now, it looks like their stats are trash, right? Their base HP, 37,000. However, they both have individual stats and they both have the gear applied to them, which does mean their HP pool is much higher combined than Esther Rosa de Chevalier. That matters. They have a lot of combined HP. The stats are applied to both of them. She has 37,000 HP. She has 37,000 HP. All of this together. The attack combined to both of them. The gear applies to both of them as if there are two sets of gear. They are two separate characters that work together for two costs. Sound too good to be true? It kind of is. Now, the basic attack. Valid hits two because they both are basic attacking. They both swing their swords at people man so they can hit the same target they will only usually hit the upfront character because they're strikers so they're both going to be wailing away at their striker or their tank unless there are two melee characters in front of you then they'll both be swinging away at individual targets that's sick because they both do have their own individual attack stat this can really help you blitz through a singular tank faster than you have any right to aka hildy now their passive skill is kind of big busted right they have the same stats and gear, like I said, it does explain it here in the passive, however, they also increase their damage resist by 30% when they're both on the field. So when both health bars are currently on the field, when both of them are alive, they take 30% less damage, period. All damage sources are 30% lessened by this passive. That is so funny busted. That's a lot of damage resist to have in a passive. They also get HP out of their passive stats, and they also get a really interesting effect on this level 5. Skill haste plus 30% for Ainz, attack plus 30% for Zwei. Now this is permanent, this is not just when skills go off. Zwei always does 30% more damage with basic attacks. Zwei always does more damage with the special skill. Think about it, Zwei hits harder, Ainz gets their skill up faster and when we go into the special skill you're gonna see exactly why I want you to maintain the mindset of this is nutty if they're together and strong if they are not now Ainz and Zwei shoot spirit swords at enemies in front inflicting AoE damage now they both when using this hit two targets that means four targets total are getting affected by this when it goes off like it should if both of them are alive Einz and Zwei shoot spear swords at enemies in front, inflicting AoE damage, hitting two people. When Einz casts a skill, Zwei responds by casting the same skill, which means they both are going to fire this, four people are going to be getting hit, two people by Einz, two people are taking 30% more damage from Zwei, and yes, as long as Einz is on the field, you have 30% skill haste on an 18 second skill cooldown. That is hilarious. This comes up so fast. It's amazing. You are popping this off left and right on these AoE shots. And as long as Zwei is alive, 30% more damage. And when Zwei 
fires this while Eins is alive. If they are both on the field, when Zwei shoots his, Zwei's gonna do 30% or hers, Zwei's gonna do 30% more attack and true damage with his double hit. It's nasty. So Eins is gonna be getting you your skills off faster if she's on board. Zwei is going to be nuking with it and Eins is gonna be applying supporting fire if they are both alive. If they are not, Zwei is gonna fire this at the regular cooldown with 30% attack but will not get the true damage. And if Zwei is dead, Eins will fire this 30% faster, but of course Zwei is not gonna fire it with her at all. Now, that means keeping them both alive is important. Pair them with a healer, it'll help you out, man. But ultimate skill right here, Ein summons all her siblings, inflicting AoE damage on and around the target, invincible during skill. So this should just tell you right off the bat, right? If Ein's is alive, if Ein's is alive, she will summon Zwei back. And she's invincible while it's happening. Now it does have instant cooldown minus 20%, after skill if Zwei is on the field. So if you use this, it's gonna get you faster and faster to your ultimate, but if Zwei dies, this is gonna bring her right back. It's also gonna pull in, like Zwei does come back, by the way, if they die, but it's just gonna pull in a bunch of people to help out. She has a third random sibling that comes out and attacks with you, and they're all three, Zwei, Eins, and the third person, whatever their name may be, are gonna smack one person each, they're going to be invincible while it's happening, which is great for a striker. Zwei comes back if Eins is alive, but Eins has to be the one that fires this. That's rough, man, but it's okay, man. If Eins is gone, you're probably going to lose Zwei pretty soon. Anyways, what do you say we dive into a little combat and talk builds? Now I want to show you how I get away with using a cheap striker in PvE. We're over here on the hardest mission on Chapter 5. Now... I like to in PvE right now, rock out with Gon, into Rosaria, which is a 7 cost, which is technically just instant, it goes down before it even matters, and then into a one piece Eins in Zwei, Rosaria flies, Gon backs herself up with her initial skill usage, which means Eins and Zwei have time to sweep in and tank for both of them, into my full, beautiful, uh, you know, operator skill with a healer, into another ranger, into some frontline to carry over because Einstein's way may not make it. And if they do, it's all the better. And what better way to help them make it than throw more frontline in with them anyway. So let's show off what it does while we talk builds all that in mind. You're going to watch right now. They're going to come in. They're both slow. She's going to back herself up with her skill. Einstein's way are going to run in and tank up for them perfectly every single time. They're going to make it to that line of scrimmage and they're both going to chop their way through the line, keep everyone where they need to be, get through this easy peasy. Now, how would I build them? If you want to build them tanky, which I wouldn't, you can put double defense on them or defense HP on them. I think the best way to really build these characters and what I'm going to do is put a defense and attack set on them because 10% attack will apply to both of them. That means you got 20% spread out. You got 10% on one, 10% on the other. You're getting double use out of the attack, which is gorgeous because they do do a lot of damage. They are more of a cheap blitz character, a swarm character, if you will, than they are straight tank. Defense attack is really the way to go. You can go double attack. I think you're going to lose too much in the survivability. You're not going to like it as much. You're probably not going to get to any ultimates. Defense attack is gorgeous in this case, to really boost with that damage resist they already have going for themselves. And that's a three star right there if I've ever seen one. So, final verdict on these. Do I think they're good? Am I going to build them myself past this level 100? Are they worth limit breaking farther? What are my thoughts on these characters having played with them in depth? I think they're cracked. And I don't think they're cracked because of their specific comparison next to like a four piece striker or maybe a hildy anything crazy like that i don't think they're cracked for the same reason is how dirt cheap they are with a leader skill they are a one cost double unit and they are two units they are a one cost two drop that's what makes them so busted. They're very useful while they're on the field they are no slouches they would be something like a tier if they weren't maybe even B plus tier if they were a four piece, they'd probably be B plus tier. Being a two cost makes them an S tier character. The fact that you can swarm with the cheapest drops imaginable, you can get four characters out instantly in PvP 
with these two on your team, you will always have them as an early drop and kind of Phoenix summon them back if they die. That's how they operate. They are pawns, but they are disgusting, brutal pawns. I'm a huge fan. That cost with the usefulness combined make them a just, just desirable unit. Must have? Debatable. I don't think there is a must have in this game, but very, very desirable if you come across them. That's my final verdict. I do think they are worth getting the battle pass for to answer the question that i almost forgot about that is it for this one guys hopefully you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it go ahead and click that like button man but you know me only if you really liked it and if you vibe with me why not subscribe with me i got you covered on two to three videos a day two on this one one on phobies and then variety whenever at this point uh you know one of the best hidden gems in the mobile marketplace i can't check in on the guild right now can i even read guild chat boogie woogie boss oh cannot add you mentor stranger what is happening it said there were it said there were chats in there. I can't check into my own guild. I've been banned. I will see you guys on the next one, man. Peace out.